Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about your favorite books of 2023. Last week, I asked on my Instagram what your favorite book is from 2023, and I have compiled all of them and put them in this video. So, here are y'all's favorite books of 2023. First one is obviously Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yarrow. This is a dragon writer romance, a uh, fantasy romance that I've heard nothing but good things about. It won the Goodreads Choice Awards for the Romanticy category. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book specifically. I've heard meh things about book two. Um, I know I haven't read it yet. A lot of people have asked me, have you read this? I have not read it yet. <laughs> Um, I have a really hard time picking up connected fantasy romances where all the books are not out yet. I just, it's hard because I just, I, I don't want to wait. I did that all when Sarah J Mass was doing all her stuff, okay? I read Akatar when only book one was out, okay? I have been through the trenches of waiting for fantasy romance books to come out and like getting them on release date and everything. That's th That's stressful. That is stressful. So I think I might just wait until a few are out. That's kind of like what I did for Throne of Glass. I think I read up until Era Fire was out, but then I had to wait again for all the other books. Anyway, I'm gonna, that's a whole nother video that I could talk about those in. Anyway, um, but I've heard great things about it. So it's not a surprise that I had multiple people tell me that Fourth Wing was their favorite. I also do want to read it because I heard it has EDS representation, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, that's own voices. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a sister condition to my own POTS. And so I really look forward to reading that in a book, um, especially fantasy book. Like you don't really get disability representation in fantasy books. So I am looking forward to reading about that representation. Next is one called Camera Shy by Kay Cove. I've never heard about this book. Ooh, this is like a love, love lesson romance. Okay, so the heroine um, spends her summer in Las Vegas and stumbles upon her new hot neighbor in his photography studio. In exchange for lessons about learning to love her body, she's going to help him save his business. Ooh, that sounds really fun. I'm going to be putting that one on my TBR. That sounds so fun. I think it also has plus size representation, so I always need books with good plus size rep. Ooh, next is Twisted Games by Anna Huang. I have it on my shelf back there. I have a dog in my lap currently, so I'm not getting up to get it. <laughs> But I do also really love this book. Um, this one is a bodyguard royalty romance and I am a sucker for those. So I also really did enjoy this one. Um, this is the second book in Anna Huang's Twisted series. This one's about Bridget and Reese. Bridget is a princess to this country and Reese is her bodyguard. Um, it's super fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's definitely so far out of the two that I've read in this series, my favorite. Then I have the Boys of Toman series by Chloe Walsh. First is Binding 13 and Keeping 13. Both, I was submitted like both of those, but from different people. Um, I've heard really good things about this series. My only like hesitation to read them is because I know that they take place in high school, um, which I'm kind of past that point in my reading journey. I'll like sometimes pick up high school set ones, um, but it takes a lot. <laughs> But I have heard really good things about the romances in here, so I might pick them up, like never say never, honestly. Um, but I've heard really good things. Um, so I think that's saying a lot also. I also just know that they're really thick, chunky monkey books, so. But I got a lot of submissions with these two books in them. So that's saying something. Ooh, someone said The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. Yes, we had the Tessa Dare read along earlier this year. I got to reread this book. Some of my friends got to read it for the first time. Uh, it's so good. Our hero is a scarred like war veteran and he is a duke and the woman who was going to be his wife before he like went off to war and got heavily scarred sees him with the scars and is like no I'm not going to marry you. I can't marry you. Um, and so the woman who created her wedding dress like has not been paid yet. So she walks up to the Duke of Ash. I think it's Duke of Ashbury. <laughs> walks up to the Duke and is like wearing the wedding dress and is like I'm here to make a statement. I'm wearing the dress. I made this. You owe me money. I don't care if you're not getting married. You owe me money. And he sees this woman in the wedding dress and is like, how about you marry me? Like, I need an heir. You seem like you'd be a good duchess. Like, let's, let's get married. And so they get married and there's a bunch of rules with them being married and stuff. So it's a fun read. Like one of Testair's best books in my eyes. Um, it's 
it's really good. Like a great start also. It's like the whole rest of the other series. Someone said Reckless by Elsie Silver. I have not read this one yet. I know, shame on me. I've read only books one through three. Um, so I have to read this one and Hopeless. So Reckless I know is about Winter who is the sister to the heroine from book one. And I think this is her romance with another bull rider guy. And she ends up getting pregnant. And so it's like surprise baby, which this has been my year for loving the surprise baby genre, like trope. Like I have found so many amazing books with that trope in it. So I feel like I love this one as well. I know a lot of my friends love it, especially my friends who don't normally love surprise baby romances really did enjoy this one. Someone said Unsteady by Peyton Corinne. This was in a video I filmed recently of contemporary romances that I'm dying to read. I wanna read this one, it sounds so good. I think this is a hockey player figure skater romance which I'm always a sucker for those. I think Lizelle also told me that this has great like mental health representation, like it dives into mental health. So I like, that's like another reason why I want to read it so badly. So um, it sounds so good. I don't want to read it though before the end of the year because I might like throw off my end of the year videos that I have planned, you know, like favorites. Cause like, I feel like if I read this now, it could be on my favorites. I don't want to mess up the videos that I've already done. <laughs> Someone said Here With Me by Brooke Montgomery. I also read this book this year. This was a fun read. This is a ranch slash cowboy romance i think the hero of this one is a farrier which is which are the guys who like fix horses like feet and hooves and stuff um anyway so this is their romance i think they have like a one night situation they meet at like a rodeo i think and um he's like older than her it's an age gap um and then she finds out who his last what his last name is and she's like oh crap because that's her ex's dad <laughs> She finds out that's her ex's dad after the fact they've been together. Then he ends up getting a job at the place that she works at, this ranch that she works at. So it's also a workplace romance. So there's like a bunch of forbidden elements going on in here. It was really fun. A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer was submitted. I really do love this book as well. This is a YA um, Beauty and the Beast retelling where our heroine Harper gets sucked, is from our world. She gets sucked into like this fantasy realm where there's a hero with a curse on him, like the beast. Um, and there's amazing disability representation in here. I think Harper has cerebral palsy. Um, so I just loved seeing that representation. I think that was the first book, like YA book, where I was able to like kind of see amazing representation when it came to the disabled community. So I'm having a really hard time pronouncing this next title, but someone said Adrenalina. Adrenalina? Is that what the title is? I'm so sorry. This is by Sam Lynn. It looks like it's like a tennis book. There's tennis, tennis racket. Okay, so it says he was the sun, I was the waves, but for now we were both stuck in the same house. The sun and the waves were bound to meet, mixing together into a volatile concoction. One that would never separate, but only unify. He was my personal hit of adrenaline and now I'm addicted. It looks like the heroine is a tennis player and this is her unrequited love story for Leon, I think, I don't know. Oh no, it's with Xavier. Who who are all these men? <laughs> it seems like this this review that I'm reading is talking about all these different guys. I'm like, wait, who's the, who's the hero? <laughs> um, but I've never, I don't think, oh no, I have read one tennis romance, but I haven't read a lot of tennis romances. So this one sounds interesting. Next, I have Broken Bonds by Jay Bree. I've heard really good things about this one. Um, this is a why choose like fantasy romance series, but like bonds and stuff. I know Victoria would die for the series, like a hardcore fan of this series. So, but if I choose one day to get back into them, I definitely would try out this series. I think this would be like a great one, honestly. Oh, so it's a Captive of the Horde King by Zoe Draven, my baby. I love this series so much. If you love alien romance series or just fantasy romance series, but you wanna get into alien romance, you need these men in your life, please, okay? They remind me of the Dothraki from Game of Thrones. Okay, yes. So this first book, our heroine is on a human settlement on the planet Dakar. The Dakari are natives to the planet and they have kind of rules for human settlers. They cannot burn their land or hunt their animals. But then the heroine's brother like figures out a way to make the soil more more fertile for plants that they're growing, crops that they're growing because their crops are not really growing out that well. So he figures out that, oh my gosh, if I burn the plants, like it'll make the soil more rich and fertile um, but then the fire kind of gets out of control and the Dakari from their camp can see the fire and come running to see who started it and to seek retribution and the heroine is basically like take me instead of my brother the horde king 
sees her and immediately is like, okay, I'm going to take you and you're going to be my queen. It's really good. It's really good. I really love this series. Another Zoe Draven book is Craving His Blood. I have not read this series yet. I know. It's tragic. I haven't read this series yet. I plan on buddy reading these books with Victoria and Zay. Um, we haven't like figured out when we're going to do it, but all three of us really want to read them. But this looks really good this series does i don't know what this one's about i don't want to read it i don't want to read the summary um but uh, i want to read these books simply because there's no driven books the next one that i have is natural 20 by charlie novak i've never heard about this book before this one's about leo and jacob this is an mm romance featuring dungeons and dragons secret flower language bouquets and a best friend who is basically a gothic prince <laughs> Okay, that's cute. Leo apparently really loves plants. He would rather spend his time buried in books and flowers. It's just easier to be single until he meets the owner of the new bookshop. His name is Jacob and he knows two things. He's really attracted to the man who runs the local flower shop and he doesn't date. Not when he's still healing from a bad breakup. Has a new business to run, game nights to organize, and workshops to host and build a website. When friendship blooms into something more, Leo and Jay must decide whether to roll the dice and take a chance on love or keep forging ahead on their quests alone that sounds so cute i am putting that on my tbr i have never heard of this before that sounds so cute someone said how to sell a haunted house by grady hendrix i think this is a oh it says it was a nominee for best horror this year i don't do scary stuff y'all what y'all reading i don't do scary stuff no <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to read a summary. I think I'm gonna be scared. I'm like the biggest scaredy cat ever. Um, but I have heard really good things about this author and that they write really good horror thriller books. So take with that what you will. So if you like those books, maybe check this book out. I will not be checking it out because I am a scaredy cat. I don't watch anything scary. I don't read anything scary because if I do, it'll get put into my nightmares and then I can't sleep. So <laughs> next I have one I've also never heard of before, which is to shape a dragon's breath by Monty Quill Back Black Goose. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, but this is apparently a young adult book about dragons. Ooh, it's a Dragon Academy book. A young indigenous woman enters a colonizer run Dragon Academy and quickly finds herself at odds with the approved way of doing things. So it's a dragon shifter romance that interweaves um like indigenous culture apparently into it. That sounds really good. I've never heard about this book. Who's heard about this book? Because I have not, because that sounds actually really good. I know I've said I don't really read YA, but like anything with dragons, I'm a total sucker for. And the fact that this interweaves indigenous culture into there makes me want to read it like even more. Next, I have Strange Love by Anne Aguirre. I've heard a lot of amazing things about this book. A lot of people have asked me if I read this book. I have not read this book yet, um, but apparently it is an alien romance that like a lot of people love. Um, I think I haven't picked this one up yet because I think I saw Jessen. I think it was Jessen read this book in a vlog of some sort and she didn't love it and I'm like oh darn if Justin doesn't love it I don't know if I will so that's my only hesitation on picking this up but never say never I might pick it up one day I've heard really good things from other people but I don't know why that one video from Justin has me like hesitant to pick it up so let me know if you've read this and what you think of it she just said that there were some pretty weird things in there I think and that she didn't like love it so yeah, let me know what you think about this book. Maestro by Auden Dar is on here. I think I have a few of my friends who really liked this. I think this is a romance with two characters who are like in the classical musical sphere. Um, this is Chad and Ariella. I think like at the beginning of it takes place when they're like in their adolescent years and then it jumps to when they're older, when Chad is um, very famous classical musician and Ariella is an accomplished cellist who is his muse. Okay, that sounds actually pretty good. And I do actually really like romances where it takes place in high school and then it jumps to when they're older because Brittany does that, Brittany Cherry does that so well. So um, let me know what y'all think of this one and if I should add it to my TBR. Someone said this whole series, the Chance Sister series by Anne Gracie, the first one being The Autumn Bride. I've never heard about this series, never heard about this book but it's obviously a historical romance. Ooh, I just see the word governess. <gasps> governess, yes. I love governess. <laughs> love governess. <laughs> historical romances. So this one's about Abigail, who's a governess and will do anything to save her sister and two dearest friends from destitution, even if it means breaking into an empty mansion in the hope of finding something to sell. Instead of treasures, though, she finds the owner, Lady Beatrice Davenham, 
bedridden and neglected. Appalled, Abby rousts Lady Beatrice's predatory servants, and with Lady Beatrice's eager cooperation, the four young ladies become her nieces, neatly eliminating the threat of disaster for all concerned. In this perfect situation, until Lady Beatrice's dashing and arrogant nephew, Max, Lord Dappenham, returns from the Orient and discovers an imposter running his household. That sounds actually really good. I need to go look that one up. That sounds really good. And you have like all the nieces. I assume that each book is going to be about them. So I guess that's why she put the whole series on this list. Next is Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood, which is her young adult book, I'm pretty sure. And it has something to do with chess. So um, I have never read an Allie Hazelwood book. I don't know if I want to read an Allie Hazelwood book. The only one that appeals to me is the one that's not out yet, her paranormal one. That's the only one that really appeals to me. But I have heard really good things about this YA one. All of my friends who've read it love it. So I think that says something. The last one that I have is Dad Can't Now by Eva Marks. I think this was also submitted for my halfway video that I made this year of like favorite books of the year so far. I did over the summer. I think this was someone's pick and I think it stuck for the end of the year as well. So I love that for them. I think I remember this being a um, best friend's dad romance. Very forbidden. I think it's novella length. Um, definitely one that I think is still on my TBR that I need to pick up. Anyways, there you have it. Those are y'all's favorite books of 2023. If your favorite book was not in this video, please comment them down below. I would love to know your favorites. Um, thank you so much for joining me and Mr. Ollie right here. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me a um, blue heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.